and everything is putting you down. Oh, the world keeps spinning around. You know you're not alone. When you're sad and blue, and everything is putting you down. Well, and welcome everybody. I hope uh, the music in the beginning put you in a really good mood, just like us, because that's what senses can do to you. Since we only have 20 minutes, I'm going to start by sharing my screen, screen uh, so we can get ahead. So this is a um, 20 minutes about multi-sensory meetings. Um, 20 minutes is not a long time when you want to share a lot of knowledge, but you can relax because we actually made the hard work for you. At the end of the session, we will share everything that we um, go through um, during the presentation. Uh, in addition to that, we will actually give you a few little gifts. We have uh, prepared a quiz, or Kit, my co-host, has. He's a former radio host. Uh, we have um, made you a playlist, and we put in some video and some little nibbits of information that you can share and look at afterwards. Um, but So sit back and enjoy. We already uh, put you, hopefully, in a little bit of a good mood. But multi-sensory meetings, of course, this is going to be uh, whether you do them online, hybrid, or virtual. Right now, we're in a situation where I hope that with the initiative from Planet IMAX, we are all looking at a steep learning curve, and we are becoming better as, as we speak. Um, if we had been in, um, in Frankfurt at Edge of Monday, I would have been standing at the door or at the beginning of the hall saying hi to you. It would be a hug or a handshake. Since we can't do that, I will begin to give you a big smile. Um, I can tell you a little bit about myself. My name is My Bread. You see some bread on the table and you look at it and you go, that's my bread. The fun story is that I have clients all over the world, so my name ends up being a pancake or a bread or McMuffin. Um, I'm not sure, Kat, if that applies to you, being a music guy, but you actually come from the city of smiles. Yeah, uh, I don't have that man many comments to my, my name, my first name at least. But uh, yeah, I'm live from uh, the city of smiles in, in Aarhus, Denmark. And uh, that, that was also the, the happiest place on the planet, at least until the, the pandemic hit. But uh, enough about my name now. Enough about your name and let's go ahead. Um, so what we're looking at today is that we would like to share um, a few ways that you can actually engage um, your participants at your workshops. And I, when I put this uh, danger sign, it's about attention because no matter what you look at it, uh, you need to make sure that you have the attention of the participants. There's so many distractions. The reason why we use sensors um, is actually also to establish some trust. Because without trust, there is nothing. Uh, uh, you will get distracted. You won't share your knowledge. So be aware that we are trying to engage with you with a little fun stories and a little way how you can twist the different sensors. And having said that, when you go to attention, when we meet physically, if we'd met in Frankfurt or in any of the other conferences around the world, we could engage with you with a smell when you come for coffee in the morning and you get up by the coffee machine and share um, some little anecdotes. You could almost taste the, uh, the drink of red wine in the afternoon and we are able to touch each other with the stories and just actually physical touching. But when we can't do that, Kent, what are our options? Yeah, well, we, we have to do something else. Uh, we can, uh, as we try today, amplify uh, some of, uh, of uh, our uh, en engagement, for, for example, or energy or the peace of mind. Just the other day, we talked to uh, a girl who's, uh, who told us a story about how she's um, um, relaxing her brain during these uh, online meetings so the the brain will focus on the meeting but what she did was she was uh, um, laying a puzzle uh, which was not it I think I think it was a, a thousand pieces but it was not that hard uh, a, a difficult uh, uh, puzzle to to make so while she she was uh, attending this online meeting 
she also could um, lay uh, the the puzzle, and and her brain would would allow her to to be on um, on both places uh, actually. So turn up the volume for for engagement, energy, and and whatever that that does it for you uh, uh, when you have uh, an online meeting. Yeah. But but be also sure that sometimes you only need to engage one sense and that could be to give you a peace of mind. If you need to listen and you feel like fumbling with your phone, you could do a puzzle or you can do a drawing because that's also what, by engaging the different senses. I told you in the beginning that you are actually a radio host. So you're used to these virtual things, not knowing uh, that, all, that you can't see your audience. What, what did you do? Yeah, well, what what we can do is is that we we can adopt uh, uh, those um, uh, those ways of of uh, working as a radio personality. You can't always see your audience um, nowadays. It's it's easier than when when I was in radio and from from early nineties. Uh, it was another thing. Uh, we couldn't see uh, any audience at all, but uh, we we knew that they were there. And, and uh, what we were doing was that we, we planned ahead and, and thought about what about those people uh, listening to the radio show uh, right now? They are there. What do they expect? How can I touch them uh, without seeing them? Can I, how, how can I use my voice to, 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 uh, to, to talk to, to, to them and, and, and let them know that, I prepared some stuff for them. I could use the tonation of my voice. I could up and down and, and the volume, of course. And I could tell, I could tell stories uh, um, and tease ahead, just like you did, Maybrit, uh, in, in the beginning when you said we had prepared a, li a little something for you. Yeah, well, we had, uh, uh, we, we have the comeback quiz, uh, uh, pop quiz, uh, comeback kids a little later. Um, and that was also a way to, to keep people uh, engaged or at least uh, wondering what's next, what's, what's ahead. And then give a little bit of yourself. Um, this is uh, an early uh, radio picture from, uh, from, from the 90s. Uh, Maybrit uh, convinced me to, to take that with uh, uh, today. And you asked about earlier, uh, Maybrit, about uh, uh, my jacket. Um, actually, that, that jacket is a jacket I got from a Danish uh, um, uh, pop artist called Cotton Move in the early 90s. And they well, gave actually, me that. Yeah. You promised me you would wear the jacket. You have well, the jacket with you. It's so old, my but um, it, it's I would still say there. It's, it's, it's uh, hidden in the closet. I, I wouldn't wear it today, but I, I have it. And that's another thing you can give a little bit of yourself when you, when you are in meetings. Um, Tell, tell a little bit about the, the room, the things, uh, um, my jacket or whatever. Just give a little bit, share a little bit of, of, of yourself in, during the meetings, yeah. Okay, so, so moving on, another way to, to share something is earlier, I don't know how many of you were present when Karina Bauer said that the most difficult task was for them to do a brainstorming. Uh, um, for, um, and that's why I would like to share a story is because music or limiting some of the senses can also have a huge impact on, on how you come up with a result. Um, in this case, it's, it's Beatles. And, and I mean, who doesn't love the Beatles? But actually, this was the CEO of Starbucks that had hired some consultants. And he was, uh, he was not very optimistic about going in and, and letting other people control his brainstorming. But what happened is that he walked into a ballroom. He got a pen. He got an iPod. Remember, this is earlier. And when he put the, uh, the headphones uh, on, he could hear this music of the Beatles come together. And what happened is that the whole uh, audience had received an iPod with music on, a stack of card and a pen. And what happened is that by brainstorming silently with music, it actually freed the brain some creativity. And he looked at the different index cards that the employees had written. And on one of them, it said, how to reinvent an icon. And Starbucks back then was about to do a pivot, just like our industry. So sometimes we don't have to fear the loss of the senses. We can still do stuff 
especially now that we have Spotify and we have everything, we can still engage the audience. It might be a little different, but using the senses in this sense, it gave them focus by just using one of the senses and adding coffee and music together. What a great combo. Also, we have been looking at what's next for the industry and, and can, we, we are engaged in a little bit of a very exciting project because what is next? Yeah, well, this this slide is uh, really next because it's it's really really early in the in the process. But uh, as we um, are all together uh, apart at the moment, we we are uh, experiencing uh, very much creativity around the world. And and uh, what we are looking into at the moment is how will the meetings be uh, in in virtual reality um, in in the future. What, what can we do um, when we uh, see uh, uh, um, some of the learnings about how the brain perceives uh, information? Uh, as you can see here in this slide, I, I won't go uh, too deep into this, but as you can see, the avatar is not at all looking like my bit, but um, that's, that's for the brain to not focus on whether she looks like that in, in real life or not, and, and concentrating on, on something else. And that's what we see in, the, in virtual reality and will see in the future, is that uh, we can design the, uh, the meeting rooms and the meetings uh, with clients or, or with coworkers exactly like we, uh, um, w like we wanna, wanna uh, to and, and with the, uh, the focus on what we wanna achieve. And, and that's uh, one of the things that we are working in, uh, looking into at the moment. And, Actually, this is a, a short, sorry, uh, a short video, and we will share that uh, with you as well on, on our share paper uh, at the end of the session. To see what's coming. Because no matter how we look at it, I mean, what we've shared, if we don't feel connected, if we don't have a sense of belonging, like I said in the beginning, we won't share knowledge. So no matter how you design your meeting or your uh, event, you got to make sure that people feel connected. Uh, uh, because that is one of the dangers uh, uh, of sitting uh, by ourselves, uh, working from home, is that we may not feel confident to share what we think is privileged uh, uh, information. I always uh, call it, let's date before we get married. So, so we need to get to know each other. We need to feel um, a connection to somebody. And that m may be difficult when we are uh, virtual. Uh, you and I, uh, we use music to connect. Other people will use something else. But make sure that you have the different senses that you can, sh you can share with people. But if they don't feel connected, if they don't feel like they belong, they won't share the inner thought. And then we won't get that critical thinking that is so much needed and that we need for the new ideas for this industry to, um, to recover and, and, and thrive. Looking at that, like I said in the beginning, we actually prepared a little bit so people actually can get some takeaways from, um, from this workshop. So what did we prepare? Well, you said that uh, I, should, I should go into this slide singing step by step. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and this might be a, a sensory overload uh, uh, today, but, but have that in mind. Uh, this share paper will give you, of course, a, a playlist um, with, with some of the, or all the tracks um, that we used in, in our comeback kits, um, IMAX uh, pop quiz. And we have a, a bunch of questions for you. And in a, a, an additional slide, we also have the answers. So don't worry and don't Google and, and don't use your Shazam or anything else. This is, this is pure fun. We have that uh, uh, for you uh, in, in the download. And of course, all the, the stuff that we talked about uh, uh, the last couple of minutes, we, we have uh, taken your notes and, and uh, we will at pancake.com slash share, uh, share that with you. And the reason why we've done that is also linking that to a memory that we can remember. We may not like, I don't even know who, sits, who actually uh, sang step by step, but I, I remember the song and it's about linking us together with a sense of memory, something that is fun because we want to share stories that are fun. And when we have that music, and we, if we fail, it really doesn't matter because it, 
puts a smile on our face. So we can use music, we can use those quizzes um, for adding the senses to an otherwise dull meeting and getting that engagement. Um, I was wondering, is there any questions that we need to address? There is. We yeah. have a question, which is, what is, and I guess question for both of you, what is the, the one thing you are most excited about uh, for the future of meetings and events? Well, I can, I can take a first lead on that. First of all, I, I will admit that I'm a physical, I'm a physical, let's meet face to face. But what I'm excited about is that when I got up this morning, I actually felt excited about going virtual because I felt that it's not, we've learned the um, technicalities of, of meeting virtually, so now we don't worry about if mistakes happen, because they will. What we could worry about now, or be, get excited about, is the content. So I'm excited about the next step, which will be sharing content with everybody. I'm also uh, very optimistic uh, uh, business-wise. I, I would say that what we see at the moment is, is a lot of creativity. And that, that's just uh, amazing. And, and we see it now with, uh, with Planet IMAX as well. Um, and we are forced to, to be creative at the moment. And I, I am looking into the future with, with a big smile on my face, because even though that there will be changes and there will be some, some things that we, we cannot do in the future, there will be a huge amount of new stuff that I'm so excited about uh, uh, getting to. So uh, I'm, I'm very positive. Is there anything that scares you? Anything we need to be cautious about look, looking forward? Well, of course, the behavior right now, it's about fear. So even if some countries have opened like Germany, you know, everybody's saying that we may open and we know how to do the hygienic stuff, but will we meet again and how will fear take the best of us and it takes a little while getting used to like i said we have to renew our relationship we have to renew our vows how do we meet in the future and have respect for each other that we don't see each other we don't have the same situation so that kind of scares me a little bit uh, but i think as an industry we will fare well because we are used to to sudden changes and we are able to to overcome that. 